Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to JT West. Today, big disking day. We're going to disc up everything. We're going to disc up the Hastings, the Jimmy Red, the new Jimmy Red field. Man, that boy, that chisel plowed like butter. Disking is probably my favorite. One of my favorite things to do. It's right up there with cultivating. Cultivating and disking is right there with each other with me, uh, especially when cultivating's good. But uh, I, I do enjoy disking. So we're going to try to get, uh, this is the uh, corn garden, the sweet corn garden. And guys, I don't know if I've said on video yet or not, but we may plant some peaches and cream also. I may put these long rolls in uh, Silver Queen and these short rolls right here we'll put in peaches and cream. I I've, I've, think I've had it a while back. It's been several years since I had it and uh it, it was pretty good i liked it and so we may do that i bought a pack of seed the other day uh we got i need to get the germination date for it how long it takes and uh not germination but you know what i'm talking about the whole time period so we can hopefully schedule this thing around vacation in july so but we're going to disc this disc the vegetable garden uh and get it all bedded up and then we'll be ready we're, we'll be sitting there ready to plant, which won't be long. Uh, it's, let's see, April 6th today. It's going to be, I mean, we're going to take a hard look at it at April 15th. We may take a, a chance on some Jimmy Red or a Hastings. Uh, the sweet corn, I'm more inclined to wait a little longer just because of the maturity date. That was the word I was looking for, not germination. Uh, maturity date of this corn, so... Anyway, we'll stop off at each. You know, I'm not going to overload you too much with disking today. We're going to show the trot to cutting, of course, and the different soil conditions and stuff. Uh, but we're going to talk about each patch, what we're putting there, too, so you guys know. So this sweet corn and our beautiful garlic. Guys, is that not... I mean, it looks like... I, I don't know what elephant garlic looks like, but I can imagine... I mean, those bulbs is going to be huge if this holds out here uh it you can really tell a difference between this spot and where i had it last year of how how it's doing so anyway let's get busy down two more to go uh that cut up pretty decent over our, some of that rye grass i sowed last fall towards it closer to the barn actually made its way through the plowing memory when i plowed it under i wouldn't want a whole patch of that without i think if i had that I, i'd want to start probably trying to kill it back with some roundup or something because it just those few clumps that made it through uh, they still in a clump over there, but you know, it's just luckily a few this right here is cutting good No problem. There's a lot of places Sometimes I'll cut something and maybe you're watching and you're like well, he just cut that why'd he do that again? I'm this this disc will uh, Create a, a hump if you're not careful and so you never want to run this thing twice over the same spot and sometimes I'm getting a hump out and uh, it's hard to tell on the camera, but uh, we're getting the hump out of it. And, and there, it, you know, we'll, uh, we'll get up there and get the hastings and the other, and then we'll get this bedded up. And I'll show you guys bedding a few things that I got on my mind too, but let's go to the next field. You've seen it on the chisel plow video. 
my Jimmy Red fill for this year, which this is probably wide as the Hastings, but the rows are a lot longer than the Hastings, so it'd be quite a bit of Jimmy Red. I don't know. It's probably close to three quarters, half acre, three quarters of acre right here, because those rows are pretty long. Uh, we're gonna cut this, hopefully get it in shape good enough to, to bed. And I look forward to cutting it because it was super, super soft yesterday. And we may go down here and cut us about four or five rolls on this short rolls and plant us some watermelons there. So I may just cut them just to get the weeds down and then we'll come back and cut them later. Uh, like I said on the chisel plow video, I hear a plane, big plane. It's a jet. There he is. Big old boy. I'll point the camera at him. way the camera's gonna see it. Yeah, that camera ain't gonna see it. Anyway. Sorry guys, I said I seen a plane. Only the military is uh seem like they're the only ones that have permission to run straight pipes on all their stuff. <laughs> Do you ever notice a military helicopter or a jet? It's twice as loud as commercial stuff. I mean it's I always use the analogy, they, they get to run straight pipes and rich as can be. They gotta worry about efficiency. I mean, those things be rolling coal. But anyway, all right, let's let's uh, let's get going. We'll plant some, maybe get some watermelon patch up there, but let's get to cutting this. think about the jimmy red my goodness boy that's probably about as deep as i ever cut uh guys that's why i chisel apply that stuff because it just makes it cut so much easier so we're at the hastings last fill of the day and it had corn on it last year this field consistently every year since i've been putting hastings in it it plows easier it cuts easier it works up easier it just it stays more loamy uh, you know, those stalks are really helping it out because, you know, you guys that's watched my video know I put a lot more stalk back in the ground than your average corn stalk. Uh, you know, my corn stalk's probably an average of four foot taller than what you see out in fields. And I mean, it's got some big broad leaves on it and a husk, uh, which I don't put too much husk back in because we try to pull that. But uh, anyway, we'll get this cut up and we're gonna be ready to bed it all, and we'll be sitting pretty good. I'll, I didn't film it, but in the Jimmy Redfield, I, I skipped over a little bit and, and cut me a couple of passes real good. And we're gonna bed up one roll, and we're gonna plant us a roll of watermelon right there. 
and uh, when we lay it by, we'll plow the, we'll plow it in, make one kind of big fur with a plow, and make us a big nice roll of watermelon. Hey, if I get five off of it, I'm happy. I, you know, if they all do good, I'm happy. If I get three off of it, I'm happy. <laughs> I got a bunch of watermelon seeds I've saved over the years, and we'll just mix them all together, and probably. Uh, probably put it in the earthway cedar and push it down through the middle after we knock the middle off and uh, plant us a roll of watermelon. So we'll do that and uh, let's cut this. Appreciate y'all hanging out this long. That's, uh, that's what it's all about, guys. You know, you got sometimes it's, you know, a lot of videos are funner than others. I actually like cutting videos. I like just watching them disc. Uh, I try to keep it not too much monotonous cutting. Uh, mix it up, telling you what I'm doing, the Haston prolific field. We left the Jimmy Red field and we started with the corn, sweet corn. And so I try to keep, you know, ones that follow the channel along, you know, they kind of kind of can keep up with what's going on. Uh, that's what I always meant to be anyway, not so much about, you know, just kind of keeping up with our daily life outside of working. And I, I, it's not too much, I'd show you my job at work but i i don't think y'all would be too uh, interested watching me hook up a fire panel so uh but anyway let's cut this Well, Hastings didn't feel did not disappoint. You guys have hung around this whole video. I'm not sure how long this thing is, but you know, hey, we we only do some big time disking once a year. Well, maybe twice after the season, in the beginning of the season, which brings up a point. And I'll put, I'll try to put some stuff in here, but um, the Jimmy Red field last summer had ragweeds this tall been sitting four five six years hadn't been cut hadn't been plowed the one thing i didn't see in it was one stitch of uh broom sage so that told me the soil was pretty good and you know the corn here last year huge had to bush hog it down had to roll the the big clumps of roots out and uh you can my point in telling you all is these small tractors if done right they can work up some land, but you have to do it at the right time, have to plan ahead and, and follow the steps. I've always said follow the steps and go through the steps and you, and you can, it can, it can be done. Uh, do they work it up quite like a rototiller? No, they don't. I mean, there's some sections of the fields that are, but a rototiller would go through and and knock these little clods out right here. But I'll be honest with you, where those clods at, where the clods are at, I don't believe I would want a rototiller in it because if it breaks those clods up, it, a lot of times it'll be hard as a brick right there. So I think I would rather have the few little clods here and there. But now, not to say rototillers are bad. Now, I, they have their place for sure, uh, especially if you got a lot of uh, organic matter you're going to put back in the soil they do real good there if you don't have a ton of organic matter it'll tend to run them together a little bit but uh, I'm satisfied with it look forward to bedding it putting it all in rows thank you for hanging out God bless you God loves you we'll see you on the next one